Hi guys, you will be shocked to hear it is another gray, gloomy, rainy day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here on uh, this gloomy Monday morning, June 10th, 2019. So uh, I was spo supposed to be out mowing the grass right now, but of course the grass is soaking wet and is pouring down rain. And then I thought I was going to have an interview with uh, the energy skeptic herself, Alice Friedman. I'm really looking forward to this uh, interview, but she had to run her husband uh, to the doctor. Uh, so I suddenly have some extra time in my schedule here today. Uh, so lucky you, you get two chronicles of the collapse. You get the one that I recorded yesterday. And this one's just going to be short and sweet. This one is from the worse than previously thought. Is this a worse than previously thought? Or a faster than previously thought? Or just a, another day in the collapse? And we're going to look, we're going to go pretty much down to the bottom of the deepest oceans for this update from good old USA Today. And, and, and all kidding aside, guys, uh, I am really impressed by USA Today the past uh, couple of months. Their environmental reporting, USA Today is, is doing a hell of a lot better job with talking about the collapse of a planet uh, than a lot of these mainstream environmental organizations are. All joking aside, good for you. USA Today and today's worse than previously thought headline of the day. <clears throat> it turns out there is more plastic pollution in the deep ocean than in the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. You know, this is probably some bad news for those techno-utopians out there. Do they still have that little vacuum cleaner uh, trying to suck up the Great Pacific Garbage Patch where about 1% of the plastic pollution is? <clears throat> anyway, the problem of plastic pollution in the ocean is even worse than anyone Feared. There you go. This is the even worse than anyone feared headline of the day. Tiny broken up pieces of plastic called microplastics are not just floating at the water surface, but are pervasive down thousands of feet. There is actually more microplastics 1,000 feet down than there is in the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, you know, up near the surface. Research uh, published on Thursday found this is Kyle Van Houten, chief scientist at the Monterey Bay Aquarium. We need to interview somebody, somebody from the Monterey Bay Aquarium. Uh, great place. Anyway, this is what Kyle has to say, <clears throat> quote, we did not think there would be four times as much plastic floating at depth than at the surface. Hmm. Van Houten is one of the authors of the study published in this week's edition of scientific reports from the journal Nature that investigated just how much plastic there is in the depths of the ocean. Literally tons, literally tons of plastic trash wash down rivers and out to sea every day. This is 365 days a year, fouling the surface and endangering sea life. It has been long believed that most of it floated, but when the researchers looked deep below the surface, they found broken down plastic pieces. 
smaller than rice grains wherever they looked. Hmm. The issue of plastic ocean trash has been a focus of public concern over the past decade, a concern that has centered on the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. That is a huge floating blob of plastic trash halfway between California and Hawaii drawn together by ocean currents to create a gyre. This vortex of waves concentrates the floating garbage in an area twice the size of Texas. But it is important to remember that the patch is not composed of big floating rafts of trash, but rather a pervasive, almost mist of tiny bits of plastic floating in the water. Think of it more as a fog in the water than as a bleach bottle bobbing along. And that same fog of plastic bits extends down deep below the surface, the scientists found. And deeper down, it is even worse than at the surface. Hmm. Previous research found concentrations of microplastic in the Great Pacific Garbage Patch were about 12 particles per cubic meter of water. We, we topped out at 16, said Van Houten of his team's underwater findings. Yes, the deep sea methods they used were highly innovative and confirmed a bleak picture of what the last decade's research has been pointing toward. Hmm, said Brendan Godley, a conservation scientist who studies plastic ocean pollution at the University of Exeter in the UK. <clears throat> Take it away, Dr. Godley. Quote, Scientists are now beginning to realize that microplastics are truly ubiquitous. They have been found from the seafloor to the mountaintops, in the air we breathe, and in the salt we put on our meals, he said. <clears throat> the biggest shock, the biggest shock of all, says Peter Ross, a toxicologist who studies the impacts of microplastics on marine life at Canada's Vancouver Aquarium, is that it is not a surprise at all how much plastic there was even deep down in the ocean. Quote, this research demonstrates the way in which we have gone from zero understanding of the problem 15 years ago to full-fledged appreciation that this pollutant is completely distributed around our entire planet." Close quote. The researchers used drone micro-submarines to sample the water from the ocean surface all the way down to the ocean floor, 3,200 feet below the surface. The sample area included one site near Monterey Bay on the California coast and one site 15 miles offshore. The highest concentrations of microplastics were found between 600 and 2,000 feet down. They also inspected the guts of, of crabs and a kind of jellyfish-like filter feeder called a giant larvacean. Both species play key roles in ocean food webs from the surface to the seafloor. Every single one of them contained plastic. This is 
Anna Lachoy, a professor at the Scripps Institute of Oceanography at the University of California, San Diego, and one of the paper's authors, quote, quote, even if you don't care about the crabs and the lar larvacians, they are in the food of things you do care about. Tuna, seabirds, whales, and turtles all feed on them or feed on things that feed on them. Anyone who has read A Fly Went By as a Child a microplastic particle went by. Is a fly went by copyright 2019. <clears throat> While they did just sample two areas, Van Houten believes they would find similar patterns given ocean currents and the ongoing mix of waters. Laser spectroscopy allowed them to analyze what kind of plastic each of the particles they found came from, which turned up some surprises. Some have suggested that the majority of plastic in the ocean comes from discarded or lost fishing gear. However, the researchers found that very few particles were from fishing gear. Almost all of them were from terrestrial sources. The one piece of good news, where we, we, we now get to the hopium at the end of this story, the one piece of good news Van Houten found and what they saw was that the single largest type of plastic they found floating in the water, about 40% came from single-use plastic such as beverage, and food containers. Said Van Houten, quote, that is something we as consumers can do something about. Single-use products are something that we can demand better alternatives for. There you go. It is up to us consumers to make consumer and lifestyle choices. To turn, what is it? Uh, what is the statistic that every, I think it's every minute, uh, every minute of every hour of every day of the year, I think it's 120,000 uh, of these single-use plastic bottles. Uh, are being pumped out on the planet. 120,000 per minute and they're claiming that the amount of plastic on this planet is, predict, is projected to double by the year. Is it double or treble or quadruple uh, between now and 2050? And of course we have the small problem that China and now more and more uh, countries in Asia are refusing to take all of this plastic crap uh, from the US and Europe and Japan and they're just turning it around and sending it back. It's going to end up in sub-Saharan Africa and it's going to go right out to the ocean and around the planet. Anybody who does not understand how the collapse of global industrial civilization and this planet is. How did they word it at USA Today that the collapse of this planet is not even worse than anyone feared? Apparently has not been reading USA Today on the mainstream media. But with that, I'm going to wrap up today's second chronicle of the collapse, I guess, and uh, spend a little more time on Alice Friedman's excellent site, The Energy Skeptic, energyskeptic.com, and uh, looking forward to talking to Alice about what happens when the trucks stop 
running. Enjoy your truck before it stops running. Bye, guys.